audible to you anyone please unmute yourself and respond am i audible to you yes, sir only 24 participants are there you have to wait for 2 minutes and then you start the session please wait for 2 minutes So my dear students, now I'm going to start the session. Sun is slowly increasing. In the earlier classes, we already discussed about uh, comparators. What is meant by comparator? What are the different types of comparators? What are the applications of different comparators? Okay, part of the work is pending in these comparators. Okay, we will complete. Uh, the pneumatic comparators and electrical and electronic comparators in the today's session. Okay, before going to explain about those two types of comparators, we will see small introduction about the comparators, right? Here, the comparator is a precision instrument used for comparing the dimensions of a field with a working standard. Okay, it is not a measuring instrument, exactly a measuring instrument, simply use it for comparing the dimensions of given block piece with a standard reference block piece in order to get the variation in the dimension. In the mass production, okay, when shop products are produced, all the components are to be inspected. If you want to use a vernier calipers or the 
micrometer to test the uh, inspect these uh, components produced in, in mass production it takes more time for different calculations okay now to reduce the time we need to inspect the okay large number of components in that case we go for a comparator the comparator simply compares the dimensions of a workpiece with a working standard okay our master setting which represents the basic setting, right here if you observe in the second paper a comparator works on relative measurements observe here works on relative measurements it does not measure the actual dimension okay do not uh, measure the actual dimension of the component simply it takes the relative measurement uh, in comparison with the standard reference workpiece okay but it indicates how much it differs from the basic dimension this is the important principle in this comparator so finally conclude that in case of comparators we are not going to we are not going to measure the actual dimension of the work part right these are all discussed in the previous classes okay classification of comparators are also completed but here in this case two comparators are pending electrical and electronic comparators and the pneumatic comparator in the today's session we are going to discuss about electrical and electronic comparators and the pneumatic comparator right electrical comparators coming to electrical comparators it is essentially consists of transducer for converting a displacement into and corresponding change in current corresponding change in current or potential difference that means the linear displacement is converted in terms of potential difference or change in current okay simply use it to compare the dimension small variation in the work part produced it uses different principles uh, complete electrical comparators are based on inductive principle or capacitive principle or resistive principle yeah. electrical comparator comes called as linear variable differential transducer linear variable differential transducer okay the variation in the length that linear measurement is simply converted into differential output voltage output okay if you observe the principle of lvdt here electromechanical transducer convert the rectilinear motion of an object into an electrical signal okay here in this case the rectilinear motion is simply converted into electrical signal okay simply the object is to be measured or inspected is placed okay, okay. After the construction of this uh, LVDT, linear variable differential transducer, the main components of an LVDT are transformer and a coil. The transformer consists of three coils: a primary and two secondary windings. We will see the primary and secondary windings in the next slide. Okay, those two windings are simply wound on a hollow cylindrical tube. Okay, the primary coil is located in between the two secondary coils. Here, in this case, the ferromagnetic core. moves freely inside the cylindrical tube okay core is that it is made of ferromagnetic material okay non ferromagnetic shock or sometimes called as push rod is coupled to the core okay in order to move the core okay inside the hollow tube okay in order to vary the magnetic flux generated or emf induced in the two secondary windings okay so these are the this is from this is the construction of the lvdt You observe here in this figure. Here the primary winding. Centrally there exists a primary winding. This is complete a hollow cylindrical tube. On the periphery of the hollow cylindrical tube, 
the primary winding is uh, simply wound on the cylinder at the middle okay and uh, beside this primary winding on either side two secondary windings are simply wounded on the cylinder on the outer surface of the cylinder okay these secondary windings are in opposite in direction and those two are connected in series okay All right here the phi value indicates the bore of the cylinder and here centrally one core is there it is made of ferromagnetic material okay the core is allowed to okay, reciprocate reciprocate inside the okay in the surface of the sorry in the cylindrical surface right you observe here here one ac source is connected to the primary wind okay simply alternate current ac current is allowed to pass through this primary wind when it is allowed to pass through this primary wind it induces the magnetic flux okay simply here you know, is the magnetic flux in turn interacts with the secondary windings on either side here on left side one secondary winding is there s is s1 okay and the right side one secondary winding is there that is called s2 okay because of flow of current inside the primary winding okay the magnetic field is induced this magnetic field simply interacts with the secondary windings on either side that creates magnetic flux that is that creates the emf in the two secondary windings okay that again these two are connected secondary windings are connected in series and you are going to measure okay the differential potential difference in the bull case okay in this in these uh, two secondary windings okay so observe here in this case one push rod is there the push rod is simply connected with the core ferromagnetic core this ferromagnetic core is allowed to okay move inside the cylinder okay there are three cases in the first case the core is placed at the center of the cylinder when you place the core at the center of the cylinder simply the magnetic flux or the emf induced in the two secondary windings are equal why because here when this core is at the center it cuts the magnetic flux okay equally on either side either side of the primary wind that is in secondary winding one and secondary winding two okay so if you measure the emf produced in secondary winding one as e is 1 and if you measure the emf produced in the secondary winding s2 as e s2 the difference of those two gives is zero okay this is called as null position okay when the core is at the center of the cylinder the center of the cylinder okay there is no potential difference to the end of the these two secondary windings okay All right here this push rod acts as the plunger just like in case of dial indicator it acts as a plunger at the end of this push rod we are going to place the work part which is to be inspected okay by 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 placing the work part to be inspected here the push rod will move inward or outward when it is moving inward and outward it reciprocates this core inside the okay cylinder because of reciprocation or moving of this core inside the cylinder okay the emf produced in s1 and s2 will vary okay that difference in s1 and s2 is taken into account in order to okay inspect the work part right working of electrical computer complete what we have discussed earlier complete detail here then the work piece is located under the stylus for the measurement purpose with the difference in datum the armature the component size would either be raised up or down definitely okay the differential potential difference with potential difference is maybe higher or lower right it defeats the wheatstone bridge this is the internal okay, connection in the particular lvd right here observe here working of lvd here this is the primary winding secondary winding s1 and secondary winding s2 okay these two are in opposite direction and these are connected in series okay here it is emf produced in s1 is es1 and emf produced in s2 is es2 because of the mo movement of this core inside the cylinder so in the first case 
if the core is at the center in that case the es1 emf produced in the s1 is equal to emf produced in s2 es2 therefore es1 is equal to es2 the net emf produced that is measured is equal to zero that means uh, means there is no output here in this case in the second case if the core is moved to the right side that means towards the secondary winding s2 the mag more magnetic flux is cut in this case that means more emf is induced in the secondary winding s2 when compared with the emf induced in s1 that means uh, here in this case s2 is more es2 is more than es1 automatically the net emf produced becomes negative okay and if the core is moved towards left towards the secondary winding s1 in that case uh, more magnetic flux is created or interacts with the secondary winding automatically more emf is induced in s1 es1 is more okay when the core is moved towards the left side okay when compared with the es2 therefore in this case the net emf is positive likewise we are going to okay measure the okay magnitude and polarity of the net emf Okay, to measure the displacement of it, in order to measure the displacement of core, we are going to measure the net EMF. Okay, right. advantages of this LVDT linearity. The output voltage of this transducer is practically linear for distance up to far. Next, infinite resolution. The change in output voltage is stepless. The effective resolution depends more on the test equipment than on the transducer. Here, the output is higher output, and also it is more sensitive. The transducer possesses sensitivity at as high as 40 volts per mm. For one mm variation of one mm linear displacement of the core, okay, 40 volts. Okay, in the case of the transducer. Drugness. That means it is uh, strong. Transducer can usually tolerate high degree of vibration and uh, shock. It is construction is uh, strong. The construction less friction. There are no sliding force here in this case. That means uh, here less friction. Also, about if you go for hysteresis, low hysteresis. Okay, in this case, this transducer has low hysteresis, hence repeatability is excellent under all conditions. Okay, here in this case, uh, this LVDT uses low power. Okay, most LVDTs consume less than one watt of power. These are the advantages of LVDT. What are these advantages? Large displacements are required for appreciable differential output. That one. Next, they are sensitive to stray magnetic fields, surrounding magnetic fields, and the receiving instrument must be selected to operate on AC signals. Right, the dynamic response is limited. Mechanically by the mass of the core. If you observe here, the dynamic response is limited mechanically by the mass of the core and electrically by the applied voltage. Response is limited by mass of the core and applied voltage. Here, yeah. compressor also affects this transducer LVDT. Thank you. Please go through this video. Explain the construction and working of. LVDT is also known as Linear Variable Differential Transducer or Transformer. It is a passive transducer which measures displacement. It consists of a primary coil bounded on a hollow cylindrical rod. It is connected to the AC source. It also consists of two secondary coils having equal number of turns and is bounded on a hollow cylinder at equal distance on either side of the primary coil. The two secondary coils are connected with each other in series opposition so that the net induced EMF of the two secondary coils becomes. We see that a movable soft iron core is placed inside a hollow cylinder. Position of this core with respect to the two secondary coils will affect the magnetic coupling between the primary and two secondary coils. Let's now understand how this LVDT works. We see that when an AC source is activated, Alternating current starts flowing through the coil, due to which varying magnetic field is produced. Now, when this varying magnetic field interacts with the secondary coil, an EMF is induced in the two secondary coils. 
we see that initially the core is placed in such a position that equal EMF gets induced in both the coils, due to which the net EMF of the two secondary coils becomes zero. This position of the core is known as null position. Now, if we move the core towards the right, we see that the flux linking with coil S2 becomes greater than the flux linking with coil S1. As a result, the EMF induced in the coil S2 becomes greater than the EMF induced in coil S1. And the net EMF shows a negative value. Similarly, if we move the core towards the left, we see that the flux linking with coil S1 becomes greater than the flux linking with coil S2. As a result, EMF induced in coil S1 becomes greater than the EMF induced in coil S2. And the net EMF shows a positive value. Thus, LBDT uses the magnitude and polarity of the net EMF induced to measure the displacement of its core from the null position. Okay. Explain the construction and work. But next, we move. We are going to move pneumatic comparator. As the name implies, pneumatic comparator. In this case, compressed air is used as the working medium. Here, in this case, it consists of a compressor and your air filter, vertical cylinder, orifice, flexible tube, and it is having measuring head. This complete one is the measuring head. Measuring head is having uh, on both sides uh, two nozzles, jets, measuring jets are nozzles. And this is the workpiece which is to be inspected. Okay. Here, here one manometer is there, right? Okay. Here in this compressor, the atmospheric air is compressed. And the compressed air is stored in the storage tank in this compressor. From this storage tank, here the compressed air is transferred to the air filter. Air filter simply filters all the dust particles present in the compressed air. And it allows only pure air to this tube. Okay, the air, compressed air carrying tube is here divides into two parts, two ways. One is connected to the vertical cylinder and the other is connected with the measuring head through orifice. And also, there is one manometer which is again connected with the vertical cylinder. And this vertical cylinder is filled with water, right? Working of this pneumatic comparator. Here, the compressed air, when it is passing through the air filter, all the dust particles are filtered here, and only clean air passes through the tube, and part of the air is simply enters into the vertical cylinder through this dip tube, and the bubbles will enter into this water. And part of the air is allowed to reach the measuring head through the nozzle, okay, a constant pressure, right. Here it is reaching this measuring head. Here this measuring head is simply used to inspect the cylindrical Okay, internal surfaces of the cylinder, okay. cylindrical components. In mass production, number of cylinders are produced, those are to be inspected, okay, the internal dimensions. Not to inspect this, those the internal dimensions. Here, this measuring head is used. This measuring head is having two nozzles, okay, or measuring jets. Through the measuring heads, the compressed air, a constant pressure simply enters here, and it L it passes through these nozzles towards the inner surface of the workpiece, inner surface of the cylindrical workpiece. Okay. Based on the clearance between these inner surface of the work part and this measuring head, okay, back pressure will create. Because of this back pressure, okay, here this compressed air written back and simply enters into the manometer in order to lower this water level in this manometer tube. Okay, the difference in height of this water head is utilized to measure the variations in the in the diameter of the cylindrical parts, right? This is the complete working of a pneumatic comparator. 
here the work piece simply allowed to fly okay and this is constant one measuring head is constant one here work piece is moving up and down here the jet is striking at different points on the inner surface of the cylinder and if, we, if there are any irregularities on the inner surface of the cylinder automatically back pressure will create and this back pressure will automatically comes back to this flexible tube into the manometer in order to lower this water level okay the difference in okay level water level that is used to identify the irregularities in the part of right yes pneumatic compressor is normally used to determine the roundness of the job the system designed in order to supply air at constant pressure right to the measuring grid the pressure of the air supplied is higher than the predefined pressure some air will be bubbled out from the bottom of the dip tube and air moving to control orifice here the constant pressure a then passes to control orifice and escape from the measuring jets when there is no restriction provided by what piece to the escape of air the level of water in the manometer tube will same as level of water in the cylinder observe here how it works in about this video in the comment front of the pneumatic comparator it consists of a compressor compressor is the heart of a pneumatic comparator compressor compresses atmospheric air and stores it inside the storage tank filter after the compressor the filter is present in this filter all the dust particles present in the air are separated from the air and clean air passes through this filter tank after the air passes through the filter the air pipe divides into two paths some air goes into the tank and some air goes to the gauging head through the orifice orifice this orifice leads air to the second chamber manometer second chamber is an outlet to a glass manometer tube gauging head the second chamber is also connected by a flexible tube to a gauging head this gauging head has two restricting jets that are used to check unevenness or irregularities in the workpiece working of pneumatic comparator in this comparator compressed air is used as an operating medium at first the air is compressed in the air compressor then the compressed air from the compressor passes through the air filter all the dust particles present in the air are separated from the air in the air filter and only pure air passes through the filter after passing from the filter the air pipe is divided into two ways some air goes to the tank and some goes to their restricted jet or orifice as air enters the water tank bubbles will be created in the tank and the rest of the air which passes through the orifice reaches the gauging head through a flexible tube a controlled amount of air passes through the orifice with the required pressure in it at this time the manometer shows the initial pressure by which the air passes to the gauging head the workpiece of the job is reciprocated along the gauging head this gauge head is generally used to examine the internal diameter of a cylinder whether it has irregularities or not in its internal diameter this gauge head is inserted into the cylinder and both jets in the gauge head faces towards the internal wall of the cylinder The internal wall of the cylinder restricts the air coming out of the jet of the gauging head. Based on the gap between the jet and internal wall of the cylinder, back pressure will be created as the internal wall restricts the air coming from the jet. When the back pressure is created, the air which is passing through the gauging head will return back and it will go inside the manometer tube and this backflow of air will push down the water inside the manometer. At first, a standard workpiece is taken in with in this case uh, the first we have to use the standard work piece which is having exact uh, in internal dimension of the cylinder okay initially the sink gazing head is allowed to pass through this uh, standard one and the water level in the cylinder and the manometer is so adjusted to maintain at the equal level okay and then you have to replace this standard work piece with the okay component produced from the component chemical component and which is to be inspected and then this work piece is allowed to okay pass okay and this uh, gazing head simply this is uh, a compressor air through the jets and this air simply strike the inner surface of the cylinder and uh, the back pressure because of irregularities present inside the 
you know surface of the cylinder the back pressure is created because of this back pressure the water level in this uh, manometer is simply lower we and that is identified here this uh, so this is which the internal wall is perfectly flat this standard work piece is used to calibrate the pneumatic comparator using this standard work piece the water height is the manometer is adjusted so that it is equal to the height of water in the tank this standard work piece is known as a reference work piece because it is used to get the reference pressure in the manometer when the gauge head of the pneumatic comparator is placed inside a cylinder which is to be examined the air hits the internal wall of the cylinder and if there are any irregularities in the internal wall the back pressure in the comparator is created and the water inside the manometer is pushed down hence the water level inside the manometer falls and we get a height difference between the water level of tank and water level of the manometer this height difference is denoted by delta h so if the delta h value is high then we can say that more amount of roughness is there at the position of the cylinder where the gate head is placed after the gauge head is placed in different positions inside the cylinder and delta h is noted for different points so that roughness throughout the cylinder can be me measured if delta h is high for different points in in this pneumatic comparator only delta h is measured the difference in uh, water head in this in nanometer is measured Based on delta H value only are going to judge the component is good or bad, good or wrong component. That is, inner dimensions are simply inspected at different positions. If the delta H is more automatic, they are going to reject this what part. Okay. Simply, you are measuring the delta H part. Okay, only on the delta H, simply are reject. Inside the workpiece, then this workpiece needs to be rejected. Pneumatic comparator is used when a large number of cylinders or workpiece needs to be tested. That is when there is the mass production of the workpiece and quality inspection needs to be done. Applications of pneumatic comparator, cylindricity. The example used in this video is of checking cylindricity. Ovality to check ovality, we need to rotate the gauging head inside the part. This will give all the variation on the circumference of the part. Similarly, this comparator can be used to check other dimensions like straightness, external diameter, etc. Advantages. It is cheaper, simple to operate, and the cost is low. It is free from mechanical hysteresis and wear. The magnification can be obtained as high as 10,000 times. The gauging member is not in direct contact with the work. Tapers and ovality can be easily detected. The method is self-cleaning due to continuous flow of air through the jets, and this makes the method ideal to be used. So here, here this advantage, the advantage is it is cheaper, free from mechanical hysteresis and wear, no moving parts here in this case. Magnification is also higher, okay, 10,000 times. The gazing head is not in direct contact with the workpiece. That means only air passes in between the measuring head and the inner surface of the cylinder. There is no direct contact. Tapers and reality can also be detained. The method is self cleaning. Why? Because the air, okay, filtered air is only passing through the inner surface of the cylinder. That means automatically it cleans the inner surfaces. That is the reason why it is called self cleaning. Tapers and ovality can be easily detected. The method is self-cleaning due to continuous flow of air through the jets, and this makes the method ideal to be used on shop floor for online controls. Disadvantages. They are very sensitive to temperature and humidity changes. The accuracy may be influenced by the surface roughness of the component being checked. Different gauging heads are needed for different jobs. Auxiliary equipment such as air filter. Advantage of contact with the work. 
This makes the method ideal to be used on shop floor for online controls. Disadvantage. It is self-cleaning due to continuous flow of air through the jets, and this makes the method ideal to be used on shop floor for online controls. Disadvantages. They are very sensitive to temperature and humidity changes. The accuracy may be influenced by the surface roughness of the component being checked. Different gauging heads are needed for different jobs. Auxiliary equipment such as air filters, pressure gauges and regulators are needed. Non-uniformity of scale is a peculiar aspect of air gauging, as the variation of back pressure is linear over only a small range of the orifice size variation. If you are new to ADTW, Okay, that's good. This is all about uh, pneumatic comparator. At this time, the manometer shows the. Right. Already discussed this advantages of pneumatic comparator and disadvantages. Okay. This is a uh, part of the comparators. Mechanical comparators already discussed in the previous classes. So up to now, the comparators are completed. In the coming classes, we're going to discuss about uh, okay, alignment tests, which are present in the last unit. That is uh, alignment test on late mission, alignment test on uh, milling mission and drilling missions. Okay, we'll see you the next class. Right. Thank you, students. Uh,